1 Samuel chapter 17. I want you to hear me. 1 Samuel 17 and verse 34. 1 Samuel 17 and 34. Thank you, Jesus, for victory this morning. We're riding upon the wings of the Spirit. God bless your choir. 1 Samuel 17, 34. 1 Samuel 17, 34. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion on a bier, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of its mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his bird, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. Seeing he had the five, my God, the armies of the living God. David said, moreover, the Lord hath delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear. He will deliver me out of these Philistines. And Saul said unto David, go and the Lord be with you. Spirit of God, I thank you for the authority of your word and the anointing of your word. And I'm grateful for the time that we're going to spend here today. And we thank you because there is victory in every heart. Thank you, Lord, because there is a deliverance coming in this building today. Thank you for the empowerment that comes with the word of God. The Bible says, I sent forth his word and his word healed and delivered. Thank you, Lord, because your word is coming with power and your word is coming with deliverance. In the precious name of Jesus, I declare and decree that this atmosphere is suitable for the glory of God. Father, I intercept and interrupt the line of communication between familiar spirits. And I declare that the enemy will not, shall not, cannot have any allowance to operate here today. As every new bow and every tongue confess the Lordship of Jesus. And when it's all said and done, all the glory will be to your name. Because our secret battle, private personal battle, you are turning it around into a public, physical, irrefutable testimony. In the name of the living Christ. And everybody say amen. Give God praise everybody. Give him praise. Come on, go ahead, Zion. Zion, go ahead and give him praise. You may be seated today in the presence of the Lord. People are usually misguided when it comes to the intricacies of life, the dynamics of life, the mysteries of life, the secret of success. If many people would understand where the blessing is coming from, they will get it right one minute. But most people don't understand where the blessing is coming from. And so they are out of alignment with God. I remember one time I was sharing with you in this house how the realm of the Spirit operates. Thank you. Just a sec. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to hype it. We're going to get there real quick. But just a sec. Thank you. And I was sharing with you how the realm of the spirit operates. If you remember, I told you that a whole lot of people are looking for monies and material things as a proof that they are being blessed in a season. But I started to let you see that those things that manifest on the outside, they actually begin on the inside. And the moment that you begin to win your battle on the inside, you're going to get it on the outside. The Bible says, glory to God, in the book of Revelations, when Babylon the great fell, that they were buying things. And scripture says they were also trading in the souls of men. And I did mention to you one time upon this altar that the currency in the spirit, they are powerful things that money can buy. If you knew what your victory looks like, you will be able to understand it and align yourself 
in accordance with the blueprint of your victory. Many people are looking for victory in the wrong places. We are fighting battles in our lives, but then we are looking for victory on the wrong platform. Now, if you understood where your victory is, child of God, you will be able to know when you have the victory or when you don't have the victory. Victory does not start when you see the physical manifestation. Victory, in fact, starts from the place of secrecy. You get your victory not on the outside. You get your victory insta inside. You get your victory not at the end of the battle. You get your victory at the beginning of the battle. God has not called you to fight some uncertain battle. Every battle that God is asking you to engage in, he's already provided the victory before the battle started. And that's why the Bible says that he will already provide a way of escape. It doesn't matter what the battle is now in your life, whatever you're dealing with, it could be pressures on issues that are very personal, things that have to do with your family. It could be pressures on things that have to do with finance. It could be something about relationship, dealing with some measure of loneliness or some chaos in your marriage. Whatever you are dealing with on a personal level, you have to understand that God has already provided a way of escape even before the battle started. There is no battle too big for the Lord. There is no stronghold too powerful for God. He's already made a way of escape. But oftentimes we don't see what God has provided. And that's one of the tactics of the enemy. The enemy wants the believer to keep assuming that things will be alright when they get to a sudden point in the physical. But God says it's already well. Okay, I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. I'm going to go on this side. It looks like the Holy Ghost is here today. God said it's already okay. The battle is already won before you started. I want you to look at my eyes. You've already won your battle even before you started. You've already gotten to the end of it because we are not fighting for victory. We are fighting from a position of victory. We are in him. And because he is in us and we are in him, we are able by that alignment to legislate our victory. I want to take you back in my scriptures. The Bible says here that David was narrating to Saul his victory in the secret. Okay. Before this season, there was no record of David's victory against the lion and the bear. There was nothing about in the Bible that mentioned it. But David here was facing a dire public situation where himself and, and Saul, they were talking about his potential and his possibility of fighting with Goliath. And, and, and David began to say, I have been here, done that. Not when people saw me, but God took me on a journey. I want you to hear this. God took me on a journey. And the journey that God took me on was at the back of the desert. God took me to the place where I battled with the lion and I battled with the bear. Nobody was there, but I battled the lion. I was alone by myself, but I battled the lion. Okay, it was at the back of the desert. I battled the lion. I confronted the bear. It, it was not a public event. It was not for heroism. It was not because I wanted a medal. It was a personal private battle. And this battle was the survival for my life. Because now one of the lamb that my father had given to me that look after was in the open desert. And the bear and the lion had come. And they wanted to take the lamb and I grabbed the lion. I grabbed the bear and I took it by its jaw and 
and by its beard and I tore it in pieces. Uh, and, and I battled the lion because I had to do it. Because the life of my animals depended on it. My very survival in the jungle depended on me responding fast. First responder, rapid responder to grab the lion and grab the bear. And there's a lot of people this morning seated in this room. You have been battling some bears and battling some lions in your life. Nobody knows about it. You are not making a show of it. You are not, you know, writing it on your face. But every time that you come to church and the service is over, you're going to go back home and battle the beer and battle the lion. It was not so others could see how strong you were. It was not so you could impress somebody. You go back home and battle the beer and battle the lion and deal with a difficult relationship and deal with a cynical environment. Skeptic people or go back to a workplace where you have to literally drag yourself every passing day just to get by on the work. I battle the lion and I battle the bear. And so I call that secret battle because you don't understand that God always, hallelujah, used the power of the secret battle to qualify you for your public victory. Okay. Because oftentimes many people are looking for victory in the, in the wrong place. They are looking for the victory when the battle is public. But God uh, takes us into the place of privacy and the place of loneliness in order to qualify us for something big that's about to happen. You see, the Olympians, or those who qualify for great athletic competition, they do not, glory to God, uh, manifest their skill or their potential on those big world stage arenas. As a matter of fact, that's only the ending of the battle that has taken place for many weeks and sometimes many months, sometimes many years. Uh, I believe Brother J. and Michelle will understand what I'm talking about because he is, you know, a, 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 a boxing champion and he knows that for whatever competition that he's going to fight, it's taken him many months and years sometimes in order to prepare for that big event. Some of you are here tonight. There is a big event that's coming on your life. And that big event is only going to be a public manifestation of everything that God has worked in your spirit. And everything that God has done in your life. It's all going to begin to come together in one place, one moment, one season, one time in your life. But the battle did not start when people saw your victory. Oh, come on, help me, Jesus. The battle did not start when everybody saw you shining. The battle did not start when everybody saw you step into the place of your destiny. The battle had been going on for longer. God had been working on you. God had been preparing you. God had been getting you ready. God had been connecting the dot in your life. And the spirit of God asked me to say to somebody this morning that for as many of you who have already been prepared by God, you have already been to that place, glory to God, where you had to battle the lions and the bear. God says in the month of August of 2018, I will now pull you out of the secret place and I'm going to bring you into the limelight and let the whole world see what I have already won in your life and let everybody know that the hand of God had always been on you in the midst of the thick and the thin in the valley of the shadow of death where you've been by yourself when it looked like nothing else mattered but God had never left you for one minute and this day shall be the manifestation of that which the spirit of God has already done for many years ago let me hear you say yes Lord 
So the athlete gets to prepare for the big game. He gets to prepare for the big day because he knows that for him to qualify to represent his country on the big world stage at the Olympics, he has to first go through many hurdles. He has to go through local competition and he has to go through state level competition and he has to go through national level competition and then sometimes he has to go through a continental level competition so that he can, my God, qualify himself to stand on the big stage and represent his own country. There's tons of people that want the same thing. There's a whole lot of people who are also, hallelujah, there to sift you out. That's the way destiny works. Every time God is calling you and you announce your destiny, the first thing you're going to see is opposition and there are local opposition and you navigate yourself from that and you go to the next level and go to the next and go to the next and by the time you having those small competition there are no cameras there no lights there no crowd to applaud you but you know that if I can walk my way through this first layer and the second layer and the third layer it will qualify me for the big stage somebody's here today God told me to tell you that your pain was not wasted come on help me somebody the little things you've been doing in pain is not wasted it is in fact what the spirit of God will use to prepare you for where God has prepared for you is anybody here in this building that see the hand of God that's with them in the dark places people always think that the hand of God is evident on your life in the in the midst of the bright light but can I announce to you that God of the light is also God in the dark corners oh my God help me somebody God of joy is also God of the many nights of sorrows and that's why the Bible says weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning God does not come it is joy that comes God had always been there you didn't hear me somebody even when the weeping was enduring in the night God was there can I talk to somebody tonight David was alone in the back of the desert nobody was watching him there was no cameras there was no crowd after David slew the giant I mean the, the, the lion and the bear there was nobody that said to him David wow what a heroic effort what a brave young man nobody saw it it happened like it was nothing but God he knew that that was the ground to get him ready for the day that it will matter some of you are dealing with some stuff right now and nobody is praising you sometimes you look at the mirror and you say girl you deserve some accolades when you see what you've been through and it look like your head is bowed down but God says I see your pain I see your loneliness I see the days of financial handicap I see the days that nobody appreciates you nobody understands you I see the days that the marriage become unbearable and you feel like walking away yet you stay I see the days when your kids acting crazy and it look like all hell let loose but yet you came out with your nice makeup and you just did like nothing happened and you say to yourself 
I will rejoice and be glad in it. Too many times before we get in the car and come to church, we've had to fight a lot. Am I talking to somebody? Many of us, too many days before we get in the car and come to church, we had to argue, we had to fight, we had to deal with difficult people at work, but yet we came because we know it's not going to be the end. We know that God in the valley is still the same God of the mountain. Are you with me, somebody? And so when so many people are waiting for the trophy at the top of the mountain, they are waiting for the trophy in the limelight. They are waiting for the trophy when the crowd applaud him. I already got my trophy. My God, who am I talking to? I got my trophy in the darkest night. I got my trophy fighting the lion and fighting the bear. And so I know that what is going to happen on the world stage is only a show of what victory I already have. Oh my God, you didn't hear me somebody. Stop looking for victory in the wrong places. Victory is not all in the light. There are sudden victory you get in the dark. Who am I preaching to right now? Victory is not when people clap for you and celebrate you. There are sudden victory you get when you are by yourself in the secret place of the Most High God under the shadow of the Almighty. That's where God qualifies you. My God, the devil is a liar. You ought to talk to somebody beside you and say you think all there is to my life is what you see in the public. You have no idea. If you know what God brought me through, if you know what I had to go through to be where I am today, my God, the devil is a liar. If you know the price I pay every day, if you know what I put up with every day, then you know that what is going on on the outside is only a caricature. I already got my victory in the secret place. And that's why the devil can't scare me. What scares most people don't scare me. Because I already fought the lion. I already fought the beast. Anybody here understand that God has laid his hands on you for a purpose? Let me hear you say yes, Lord. And so the spirit of the Lord, he needs to determine the end of the battle before it started. And because God would never do anything in your life without partnership, partnership with you. And God knows that you and him have to engage on different levels of victory. And because of that, the Lord will have to test you. And he has to develop you. And God will have to prepare you. And God will have to ascertain that you are ready. Hallelujah. In one blow of a moment, when you have to manifest what he's done in you, that you are not going to back down or back out. That you have already been thoroughly furnished. And so God will start to deal with you behind the scene. And there's something really powerful about God dealing with you behind the scene. When God is he's dealing with you behind the scene, there's nobody there. Am I talking to somebody? You, you see, why so many people fall easily is that everything they know and they do, it has to be done in the open. And, and that's the problem with this generation. We live in a Facebook generation. And in this Facebook, Twitter, Periscope, Instagram generation, everybody putting their business out in the world. Everybody wants to tell everybody what everybody is doing because everybody is jealous of what everybody is doing. And that's why people can't do anything. Some people go and show pictures of themselves in every situation. They write everything out. We don't have a place for the place of the secret where God meets with his people. I want you to hear
hear this. Regardless of how much we put out of ourselves in the public, the real battle of life is fought privately. Okay. All right. And, and, and the big deal about your spirit, the real things about your spirit, is not what people know of you. Okay. Because anybody can put up a, 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 a big impression a big show of themselves I'm, i can say to people this is who i am this is what i want you to see or know about me but that doesn't mean that's what's going on inside of me god i want you to hear me does not meet you on facebook god does not meet you where everybody else knows you okay god meets you in the secret of your heart Okay, because the secret of your heart is that place that nobody knows. Okay, the, the secret of your heart is the place that only you and God will be by yourself. So you can put up a show for everybody else. You can let everybody feel like you are a macho, strong person. But inside of your heart, God knows if you are an insecure person who is afraid and who is dealing with a lot of issues. And God is the only one who understands you in that area of your life. Who am I talking to? God is the only one who can empower you. I want you to hear this. And because the enemy also understands your weakness the, and that's why the bible says no weapon fashioned or formed against us shall prosper the word fashioned or formed means to to customize something to to tailor make something so the enemy understands the dynamics of your life satan knows your history he knows your uh, 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 fear he knows your insecurity and and when the devil is going to try to prepare a weapon to attack you the devil will prepare the weapon that is tailor made for you not the weapon that people think will work because the impression that you give to people might not be the right impression of your heart when the enemy come on somebody is going to set an attack against you he's going to have to orchestrate something that is suitable for your particular heart hidden situation and that's why when God will prepare you okay God will not prepare you on the outside based on what people think or say of you God will deal with you based on the issues of your heart oh my God God will prepare you in out God will walk on your belly God will walk on your secret area the things you never told anybody the things that you're too ashamed to admit the things that you cannot own up to but a, a, a big battle in your spirit God will use the secret battle in order to work on those issues of your life he will work on the fear he will work on the pain he will work on the abuse he will work on the loneliness he will work on the anxiety he will work on the secret sin that you can't tell anybody he will use everything that you are dealing with in your life to thoroughly furnish you so that his glory can be revealed in your life because one day is coming when after you let God walk in your spirit there will be a public manifestation and everybody will know that God has worked inside of you last 10 people here 100 people in this building this morning I begin to sense the Holy Ghost it says to me you don't worry don't pay attention to things going on around you you focus on the work that God is doing on the inside because God will not delay he will not tarry he's working something where you thought it's late he's not late he's training you when you fight the lion he's training you when it looks like you don't have a job he's training you when you are low on the money he's training you when your friends walk out on your life he's training you you when people call you all kinds of 
names in front of you or behind your back is training you when you feel all down and broken and when you fall many times God will pick you up because God is using those things to train you let me hear somebody say he's getting me ready and so now David God used the secret battle to prepare him I want you to hear this he's going to use it to prepare you God will prepare you he's going to use it to prepare you so when David appeared before Saul and Saul said to David you are only a little boy you are just a child of 17 years old this man has been a soldier all his life he's done nothing but war you can't face him David said let me tell you my profile let me tell you my resume let me tell you my story don't be fooled by the age don't be fooled by the looks let me tell you where I've been let me tell you where God brought me from okay there was a time when I was alone in the field and the lion came and the bear came and, and I grabbed him. I grabbed him and I tore the, the bear and I tore the lion. And God who delivered me from the mouth of the lion and from the mouth of the bear. He will also deliver me from this uncircumcised Philistine. I want you to watch something. Watch something. David already got his supernatural endorsement by the secret battle. Listen to me. God had used the secret battle to build his trust and faith in God. Okay, am I talking to somebody right now? But the things he suffered and endured behind the scene where nobody saw it, God used it to develop his trust and his faith. So when he faced Goliath, he was not concerned with Goliath, but he was more concerned with the power of God. I want you to hear this. He said, God, who delivered me from the mouth of the lions and the bear, he will also deliver me <laughs> from this uncircumcised Philistine. Okay, so everybody saw Goliath, but David saw the faithfulness of God. Okay, and the faithfulness of God, look in my eyes, was prepared not in the open battle, but in the what? secret battle. In the what? Secret battle. Where, where, where nobody was there. He had developed trust in God. He had developed faith and assurance that God who delivered him from the lion. Oh, come on somebody. You cannot know God except by experience. Uh, uh, revelatory experience. A lot of people carry a head knowledge of God uh, and they quote the Bible. They quote a scripture that has no tangibility in their spirit. They have not experienced. You cannot explain what you have not experienced. Okay. And that's why every time in the Bible where there was a manifestation of the name of God it came through experience when you read every time that God manifested his name to one of the patriarchs it came by experience okay so when God manifested himself as God El Bethel he, it came through the experience of, of Jacob at the back of the desert where God made hallelujah the pillar a, a ladder rather to come from heaven and earth and the angels were ascending and descending on it as, 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 as Jacob Jacob used the stone for his pillow. When, when, when Abraham had the revelation of God, El Jireh, he was when he was alone at the top of the mountain. And he had no choice but to sacrifice his son to God. And when God gave him a replacement in the, in the ram, he said, God shall provide, which means Jehovah uh, El Jireh. I want you to understand that you cannot, hallelujah, talk about God or talk on, for God if you've not experienced the power of God in your life if you bear a witness to something that you've not experienced then your witness is false I want you to hear me this morning now that's why God had to take David to the back of the desert and make David to combat with the lion and the bear and when he came out strong now he's able to trust God let me speak to somebody this morning that what the devil thought will kill you in the secret God God was using it to build your capacity and to build your faith and to build 
build your trust and to make you hallelujah build your resume you are building your profile of dependency upon God and you can tell everybody you have no idea you are seeing this battle that each of you can see is the biggest battle that I've fought in my life let me tell you where God brought me from and the things I've had to fight for me to get here and so if God could keep me alive till today Jesus if God could help me where there was nobody there to applaud me if God could sustain and support me the same God that kept me alive who am I preaching to this morning is there anybody in this building that God has used many experiences of their lives to prepare them for this season my God the devil is a liar this right here is your season this is the time that you have to face Goliath and this Goliath head is going to come down why because God already gave you victory over many battles In tell three people I already got my victory before I even got here I fought worse battle I've been through the thick and the thin I went through the pain I've been lonely before my God the devil is a liar I've had to survive on a dollar and so this is nothing God already got this because he prepared me already to overcome everything that people will say about me come on somebody I've been lied against before I've been back beaten before people have abandoned me before and if I'm still standing now it means I'm not about to fall right you got to see the hand of God in the secret battle because that's where your victory is. If you lose that battle in the secret place, you're going to flop in the open. You're going to see Goliath and run. You're going to cower like the rest of the people. You're going to say, I can't handle this, Lord. Lord, why me? Lord, why me? Why'd you allow all this to go on in my life? But God said, listen, if you will understand that my hand was all, always on you in the sacred place where nobody saw it where you were tested and approved then nobody can stop you in the open nobody can stop you if they couldn't stop you in the sacred place they can't stop you right now come on somebody who am I talking to right now God is about to take you on a business board and God has prepared you in the secret for the kind of resilience and the kind of capacity you need to sit on the board of multi-million, multinational conglomerate. God has already gotten you ready. Nothing the devil can do now that can shut you down. You got to tell the devil. You got to try harder, devil. Because I'm not just a, hallelujah, a passerby. I have been in the secret place. And the hand of God has been on my life. And God has prepared you for this one moment. Some of you right after I preach, you're going to have a Goliath moment. Because the next, the next line to your final victory is when Goliath shows up. Who am I talking to right now? Oh, come on, tell somebody, get ready for the Goliath battle. You fought the battle of the lions. You fought the battle of the beer. But right now, get ready because Goliath is going to show up anytime soon. And when this Goliath shows up, it's going to be easy because you already built your resume in the realm of the spirit. And you tell the devil, 
I can't let this battle go to waste. This battle with Goliath. The power of God is on my life. And by that same power that God used to defeat the bear and the lion. That same power is going to lift up my head in this season. As I face the biggest battle of Goliath. Because right after this battle, there's going to be a major victory. And every eye that did not see you when you were fighting the beer, every eye that did not recognize you, everybody that did not know your pain, I tell you in the name of Jesus, in the next two weeks, they are going to see the manifestation of your national and international manifestation. And they will know that God has already won the battle before it started. Because God, he put in you everything you need to win every Goliath that you're gonna face and so I'm, I dare you this morning to brace up yourself and get back in the ring and tell every Goliath you are coming down now tell everything that's trying to intimidate you and everything that's trying to frustrate you and every battle the devil is trying to bring against you is there somebody in the building right now that says I know my God who delivered me from the lion and who delivered me from the bear he is right here and I'm getting my victory out of this Goliath battle this is not the end for me my God the devil is a liar devil you don't know what you're messing with I'm made to last I'm built to last I'm built to win I'm not a survivor I thrive my God because God he took it's time to prepare me for this season. Am I talking to somebody right now? And the Spirit of the Lord says, This season is the season of your life. You have prepared for it, and it's now time for every devil in the pit of hell to give way because a child of God is about to manifest. The Lord told me to tell somebody, You're gonna manifest on that job. You're going to manifest in every ramification. You're going to manifest in your assignment. You're going to manifest in your industry. You're going to be the light in the public place, in the marketplace, in relationships. You're going to be the light on your education. You're not going to back down. Am I talking to somebody? You are not going down in depression. The devil is a liar. I've been through wars. God used the secret pain to prepare me now for what is going on now because there is no option I got no option the only way is the way up I can't go down I'm not soft like I look if you think I'm a jelly you think again because I fought lions and I fought I fought beer and this Philistine is going down like one of them. Can somebody give God praise right now?